guys and welcome to Escape We Watch Reviews. My name is Steve and today we're going to be reviewing the Bernie Model AM139M. So I purchased this watch from the Bernie official store on AliExpress for $80 during the 11.11 sale. I think the $80 price was an absolute bargain for this watch. The current retail price for this watch is about $130 US dollars, but Bernie does participate in the sales so uh, it does look like it'll be on sale for the upcoming Black Friday sale. Um, looks like it'd be 117 and that's before any other AliExpress coupons and stuff like that. So uh, just keep that in mind when you're about to purchase. The watch is currently available in three different colorways that you can see here. And I think they all look really good. I actually debated pretty hard between the green and the black, but I went boring and just got the black. The watch case is made of 316L stainless steel. It has a sapphire crystal, screw down crown. This one is not screw down a screw down case back, 200 meters of claimed water resistance, and the watch is powered by the Miyota 8205 automatic movement. So I purchased this watch because I kind of went on a, a compressor style kick. Uh, I've always liked these dual crown style watches. I reviewed the Christopher Ward a while back, and I actually purchased the Redune R3, which I have on wrist today, which will be coming up in a future review. So both of these arrived on the same day. Um, if I had to pick and choose between them, I think I'd probably go with the Bernie, but I, I don't know. There's something about this one too that I really do like. Different style, uh, compressor style watches, I guess. So, um, yeah, I think either one of them are really good, but, uh, this is all about the Bernie. So I say we get right into this review. All right, let's get the dimensions. Got a case diameter of 41.5. Case thickness is 13.3. 22 millimeter lug width, lug to lug of 49.0. And on the supplied silicone strip, it weighs about 108 and a half grams. So if you guys do know me, um, you know, this is a little bit bigger than I like. Uh, I, I typically stick to about 40 millimeters and, you know, 47, 48. So being, you know, just under 42 millimeters, you got dual crowns, you got a big dial, big piece of glass. It does look pretty big, but uh, something about it just works for me. I'm not really sure what it is, but yeah, I think they pull it off nicely. Uh, you know, it's 49 millimeter lug tip to lug tip. But you can see it does have some nice turn down to the lugs there. So it hugs the wrist good. The strap, I think, helps a lot too. You know, it's got this fitted strap, which we'll talk about in a little bit, but it is very comfortable on wrist. I like the way it wears. So I'm going to go outside right now and throw it on my wrist for you. And here we are on my seven and a half inch wrist. And you can see that it wears great. Uh, I can definitely pull it off. It's short enough lug to lug that I think a lot of people can pull it off. It is a little big, but it kind of goes with the territory of these watches. I haven't seen one uh, from this era uh, smaller than 40 millimeters. So, um, yeah, it's just kind of uh, what you got to deal with. But I think it does look really good. Uh, you got some nice turn down to the lugs there. So it does hug the wrist nicely. Flat sapphire crystal. Lots of reflections off of the bezel. Got those high polished chamfers as well. I think it all looks really, really good. What do you guys think? And this strap that they pair it with is really nice. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But uh, yeah, it feels very good on rest. I do like it. Unfortunately, we don't have any sun today. So I can't show you that nice sunburst, but hopefully the studio lights uh, you know, show it off a little bit. But there is a definite, you can see the fume right there. And then the, the sunburst. Uh, yeah, you can see it a little bit right there. So there is a strong, a pretty strong sunburst on this dial, uh, and it looks really, really good. All right, let's go back inside though. Throw it on some straps, and we'll get back to the review. And here we are on a kind of tan leather strap, suede strap. It is <laughs> oh my god, these ducks! It's raining outside, so I didn't want to go outside. And that's why they're yelling at me. But uh, yeah, this is a 20 millimeter, so yeah, it looks kind of silly. But really, my only option when it comes to leather straps is throwing on something a little bit narrower. So hopefully, that just gives you an idea of what it would look like on a tan leather strap. I think it looks pretty good. Let's go throw it on some other straps, though. These next ones will be 22 millimeters. And here we are on an orange silicone strap. This is just a single pass. And yeah, very comfortable strap. I'll leave the link for this down below. I got it off at the Amazon. Um, but yeah, it's a nice strap, very, very thin. But I think that looks really good. Kind of matches and brings out the orange accents on the dial, as minimal as those are. But yeah, I think that does look really good. What do you guys think? All right, let's throw it on some other ones. And here we are on a green nylon strap, one layer underneath it. And I think that does look really good. What do you guys think about that one? Yeah, I like it.
Got one last strap to throw it on and we'll get back to this review. And here we are on a gray nylon with two layers underneath the watch. I still think it wears pretty good. It's a little thick, but uh, I think it, it still, you know, still wears and looks pretty good on that. And I do like that color combo. I think it kind of matches the dial really nice. Yeah, it looks good. What do you guys think? Sorry about the rain. Uh, one of our rare rainy days here in Florida. So no sunshine for you guys today, but hopefully that gave you a good idea of what it's going to look like outside natural lighting i think it looks really good all right let's go back inside and let's get back to this review all right so let's talk about the case finishing and the case finishing is really nice it's a mixture of brushed and polished and i think it's kind of that perfect balance it's kind of a dressy sports watch uh, one that you're going to be able to wear out every single day not really look out of place maybe wear it to an office but i don't know it's a little chunky for that but uh i think it does look really really good so you've got a fully polished bezel as you can see here the polishing is done really nice i have no issues with that even this bottom edge of the bezel is polished you have a polished chamfer separating the top and bottom surfaces here again pretty nicely done when you get up close you can see it's a little bit soft on those those chamfers but um, yeah not too bad this one actually looks really good uh, this one right here, you can see it's a little soft on that top edge, but again, from a distance, when you're not getting really close with macro lenses, the finishing looks very good. Uh, I'm pretty happy with the finishing. It's, it's still not, you know, San Martin levels, but it is, uh, I'd say better than Pagani design. Um, so yeah, really nicely done. Uh, on the side of the case here, you have a vertical brushing. That vertical brushing continues on to the lug tips, and I think it looks really good. Again, no real issues with it. The brushing looks good. The dual crowns on these, uh, nicely sized crowns. I think they might be just a little small for my fat fingers, but um, I like that they're they're shallow. They're not super deep crowns. And yeah, I mean, they just, they work. They look really good. I do wish they had some sort of logo on the end or at least some sort of uh, like an etching on the end. I've seen, you know, the crosshatch pattern and stuff like that. Uh, I think that would look pretty good on this. These are just fully polished. Kind of boring, but uh, they do the job, and they do the job well. Uh, again, I've got no real issues with it. There's a good view of the vertical brushing on the sides of the case. Pretty happy with it overall. Flipping it over to the case back here, you've got a display case back showing off the Miyota 8205. And, yeah, I mean, it's, it's not a fancy movement at all, uh, but it's still kind of fun to see and look at. Um, you get your typical spec sheet around the outside. It does say it's a hardened stainless steel HB 600. I tried to look into that, but I didn't really find anything. Um, you know, maybe I'll do an update with this thing if I keep it in the collection for a long time. Uh, but for right now, I mean, it's it looks fine, but I've only had it for a couple days, so that's to be expected. Um, but yeah, it does look pretty good. Simple notches to get a tool into. Circular brushing on the bottom of the lugs there. Everything is very comfortable. No sharp edges, no, you know, nothing to irritate the skin or anything like that. Uh, we're going to test that for Sapphire in just a second. But yeah, I think the case finishing on this, the case shape, uh, really lends to the wearability of this thing. I, I'm not sure what it is, but uh, it just wears great. I really like wearing it. All right, so let's test this thing for Sapphire. The front crystal is positive for Sapphire. The back crystal is also positive for a sapphire. So that's really nice to see. Just a flat sapphire crystal on the front and on the back. Really happy with it. No anti-reflective coating. Um, but yeah, I think it's a perfectly acceptable you know, crystal. I, I'm not too fussed on anti-reflective coating when it's a flat crystal. It's when you get the domes that it becomes an issue. So I have no problems with them not using AR. I'd like them to use AR, but um, it's not a big deal that they didn't use AR. It's just super simple flat crystal sit just barely above that bezel there um yeah it is what it is it, it's a perfectly acceptable crystal i have no issues with it all right so before we talk about the dial let's get into this bezel so there is an internal bezel and it is operated by this two o'clock non-screw down crown so that's kind of nice they didn't make this a screw down crown and they still kept the 200 meters of water resistance um yeah i'm not really sure how that works underwater i don't think you're going to be wanting to turn this underwater but uh, you definitely could and maybe accidentally doing it. It is fairly stiff though, so that's good. You're not going to accidentally knock it in my opinion. 
uh, it's stiff enough where it's going to want to stay in place. Really nice smooth action on it. There's no clicks or anything like that, so it's just a friction bezel, but really nicely done. I'm happy with it. It is bi-directional as well, so that's cool to see. Um, yeah, I've got no real issues with it other than this alignment. It's kind of weird. Uh, if you align the minute markers, as you can see there, the triangle looks a little off. If you align the triangle, the minute markers look a little off. So something, something's going on with the alignment of this bezel. Uh, but otherwise, I think it looks really good. The bezel markings is just a simple black bezel with white printing on it. Little orange accents. You got orange on the triangle here. You've got orange at the five minute markers up to 15 minutes and then at 30 and 45. And I think it looks really good. Otherwise, I mean, it, it's, it's, yeah, I've got no issues with the bezel other than that weird little alignment thing and the fact that this pip is not loomed. So there's no loom on the bezel insert, which is a little odd and a little disappointing. I, I would definitely like to see loom on the pip. Um, you, you don't have to loom the whole thing, which, I mean, that would be nice too, but loom on the pip is a minimum, I think. So, um, yeah, Bernie, if you're looking to upgrade this thing or update this thing, a couple things to look into is the alignment and looming that pip there. All right, so let's talk about the dial on this thing. And the dial is really nice. Um, uh, yeah, I've got no issues with the dial, except when you get really close up to it, you can start seeing some flaws in the indices. But otherwise, I think the dial itself is really nice. It's a fume dial, so it kind of goes from gray out to a... Uh, like a really dark gray. Same with the blue, same with the green. I think those are both Fume dials as well. And then they got really nice strong sunburst here. Unfortunately, you know, very cloudy today, so I couldn't really show it to you outside. But here you can see pretty strong sunburst on the dial there. Even though it's a, a very muted color, I think it looks really, really good. It's almost like, a, it's got like hints of brown in it. So uh, it's not just a straight gray dial. I think it looks absolutely fantastic. Very, very happy with the dial on this thing. Getting up close, you can see you've got this kind of groove cut into it, which gives it a little bit of an interest, and I think it breaks up a otherwise pretty large dial, so I think that looks really, really good. You've got your Bernie branding, which is, in my opinion, maybe a little bit too big, uh, but it doesn't look horrible in my opinion either. So yeah, you've got a nice day-date cutout window here, where both day and date are very nicely centered. The indices are applied nicely as well. This is when, I'm going to see if I can even show you guys, but I mean, it's going to be hard to show you. Um, but yeah, the indices on this thing are under macro. Uh, they don't look the best. Uh, you're probably not even being out, going to be able to see it here. Uh, I think they do look pretty good though. Just, I mean, they're just not, they're just, it's kind of what you expect from a $100 watch. I mean, uh, it looks good when it's on your wrist. It looks good from, you know, this distance. But when you get really close, that's when you start to be able to nitpick the quality of it. But, I mean, who, who does that really, right? I mean, you know, it, it just, the fact that it looks really good from this far away, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a very impressive dial. I'll say that. Very impressive dial. The handset on it, really nicely sized. Big and bold. Kind of skeletonized as well. Nice big plots of loom. I love the second hand on this thing. You've got that loomed part right here. And the loom on this thing is surprisingly good. Um, you can see the numerals, they do fade a little bit faster than the rest of the dial. But, I mean, this dial hangs on all night long. I had no trouble reading it at 5 in the morning when I woke up when my eyes adjusted to the dark. It's great loom. I've got no issues with the loom on this thing. All right, so let's talk about the movement. I'm going to pop up the time graphic shot right here, and here's how this one is running. It's running really good. Uh, very happy with this movement. It is the Miyota 8205. It hacks. It hand winds. 21,600 beats per hour. 42 hours of power reserve. My only issue with it is that it's a unidirectional winding rotor. Uh, let's see if I can get it to spin for you guys here. So every once in a while you get it going like that. Uh, it's, I got to say, it's much quieter than the 8215 i've not really noticed it the only time i noticed it was when i was in a dead silent room um and that's it i haven't felt it on wrist or anything like that so um yeah i, I have no issues with this movement it's been great for me the movement is operated by this four o'clock screw down crown so you screw it out nice screw out action very smooth my only issue with it is that it doesn't really have a satisfying pop so right there i could feel it disengage but i really had to feel for it um, first position is your hand winding. Second position is where you set your day and date. You wind it forward and that changes your 
date. I'm not really sure why this doesn't have a different language on it. It's it's English and English. That, that's kind of odd for me. Uh, winding it backwards sets the date. And I mean, again, it's centered in there really nicely. I've got no issues with the alignment on this thing. Uh, it functions really good. Pulling out to the third position here, you can see it hacks the movement. So unlike the 8215 where it sometimes does, sometimes doesn't hack, this one does hack. Um, yeah, I've got no issues with this. And this is where you set your time. Feels nice and solid. Kind of typical of a Miyota movement. I like it. The crown, you can see it's a little wobbly here, but it's not too bad. Uh, I've had no issues with it, you know, picking up those threads immediately and screwing in. Very satisfying to screw in. Got no issues with that. Got no issues with the movement. It's been great for me. All right, so let's talk about the strap on this thing. And the strap is really good. Uh, very, very comfortable. You can see this is the resting position there. So it does just kind of drape right over your wrist. I love the strap. Really nice. Great fitment into the lugs there. Really nice and seamless look to it. It's kind of got this waffle pattern on the top here. Uh, I'm, I'm a little, it's maybe a little bit short. I know this is going to be worn on some bigger wrists. So, um, yeah, I mean, it probably fits up to an eight inch wrist still and probably down to like a six and a half inch wrist. So, uh, you should be pretty good on the size of this thing, but yeah, I think it looks really, really good. I'm very happy with it. The strap does have a slight taper, as you can see right here from 22 millimeters down to 20 at the buckle. You've got two floating keepers here, really nicely sized in my opinion. I haven't had a problem with them kind of moving on their own. Uh, the buckle on this, it's a fully brushed buckle. It's nice and solid. It's not anything special, pretty low profile uh, and a pretty long buckle, but um, yeah, I've got no issues with it. No branding or anything on it, but again, no issues with it. It's not flopping around and that's really all I care about. Um, yeah, I mean, but it's a really, really nice, soft, I mean, just really nice and soft rubber or silicone. I'm not really sure what material it is, but I mean, it looks really good. On the underside here, you've got this horizontal kind of grooves in it. Uh, it should be very breathable in the hot summers and, you know, let the water go through there if you're taking it swimming and stuff like that. So again, I've got no issues with the strap. I'm definitely uh, not going to, I probably won't be taking it off the strap unless I put it on that orange strap that you saw in the uh, in the strap shows. That's that's pretty much the only time I'll be taking this off because this strap is actually really good. So there you go guys. That is the Bernie AM139M. It's a really nice compressor style watch. Uh, brand new from Bernie and they just kind of nailed it. Uh, absolutely love it. You know the thickness it's a little much but that's kind of that kind of comes with the territory. I haven't seen a compressor style watch uh, you know, be thin. So uh, the fact that this one is, you know, 13 and a half, it does wear really nice in my opinion. I think this watch is excellent. If you can get this thing for, you know, 115 bucks or so, that's a great price. The $80 that I got it at is just kind of crazy. Um, so yeah, very happy with this watch. I like it a lot. I like the looks of it. I think the dial is killer on it. I like the case finishing. Uh, the internal bezel is unique uh, I do like the strap a lot. The movement has been great for me. I do wish they'd, you know, offer this with a no date, uh, maybe with like an NH38. I think that would be pretty cool, but uh, this movement is fine. I've got no issues with it. And, you know, having the day and date is useful to a lot of people. So, um, yeah, that's that's kind of my, my thoughts on the watch. I think it's really good. If you are interested in a compressor style dive watch from AliExpress, there's not many options out there. Uh, Bernie has a version one. This is their version two, which I mean, it's a completely different watch. So I wouldn't even call this a version two. This is just a new model. And, you know, I think it looks really good. Your other option is the Redune, which I still, you know, have on wrist here. And we'll review that one in a little bit and you can make your decision. But I, man, this watch is, um, yeah, it's really, really good. Very happy with it. So if you guys are interested in this watch, click that link down below. That is an affiliate link to the Bernie official store. They're great to deal with. Um, I've had no issues with them and, you know, they put out a really nice package. The quality control has always been excellent from them as well. And the customer service has been good. They are friendly. They're helpful. Um, yeah, not really sure what else to say. Buy with confidence from Bernie. Um, they put out some nice watches. I think that's about it for me, though. Thanks a lot for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next one. See ya.